Students, today we are going to discuss about the alcohols, phenols, and ethers. So this is the chapter we are going to discuss. So let us first discuss the synopsis of alcohols, phenols, and ethers. Understood? Okay. Let us discuss the synopsis first. We are going to discuss about the synopsis of alcohols, followed by the synopsis of phenols and ethers. Okay. During this synopsis, we are going to get covered the preparation methods of alcohols, chemical properties, and distinction tests for the alcohol. For the phenols also same preparation, chemical properties and the distribution. Okay. Let us uh, have a look of the synopsis. So students, uh, this is uh, that is alcohols. You know, alcohols is having the formula. What is the formula for alcohols? That is. Uh, CNH 2N plus 1 OH. It is having the formula CNH 2N plus OH. And you see the structure. Uh, here, uh, the carbon in alcohol is having the hybridization sp3. And you see the bond angle between the carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen bond is 108.9 degrees. Right. Next, uh, coming to the preparation of alcohols. How the alcohols are prepared? So, alcohols are prepared. So, here, first, uh, in this, uh, so we can prepare alcohols from uh, different compounds. We can prepare alcohols from alkyl halides. We can prepare alcohols from alkenes. We can prepare from the carbonyl compounds. And we can prepare from the carboxylic acid also. So here the first reaction is uh, preparation of alcohols from that is uh, it is from alkyl halides from alkyl halides. You can see here the alkyl halide is reacting with the aqueous KOH. In the alkyl halide is reacting with the aqueous KOH. So what happens in the place of X? What is going to get come? OH is going to get come. So alkyl halides can be converted to alcohol. Okay, alkyl halide can be converted to alcohol upon treatment with aqueous KOH. Next, how can we prepare alcohols from that is uh, alkenes? So alkenes, uh, so for alcohols can be prepared from alkenes by two methods. By two methods. So what are the two methods? Uh, from which we can prepare that is alcohols from alkenes. So here, the two methods from which we can prepare that is uh, alcohols from alkenes. Here you can see that that is first from concentrated H2SO4. So from concentrated H2SO4, it will follow Markovnikov addition. And uh, second method is by hydroboration and oxidation. It will follow anti-Markovnikov addition. Okay. So this is the uh, that is uh, from alkene. So here, that means in the presence of H2SO4, what happens? Water molecule is added to alkene. In the presence of H2SO4, water molecule will be added. Okay, hydrogen will be added to one side and OH will be added to one side. And thereby, what you are going to get? You are going to get the alcohol. Okay, this is one method. Okay, this is the one method for preparation of alcohols from alkenes. Second method is by that is hydroboration and oxidation. So this method, what we are calling it as hydroboration and oxidation method. Hydroboration and oxidation method. Hydroboration and oxidation. In hydroboration and oxidation, so the, the addition will follow anti Markovnikov addition. Why is because we are making use of the peroxide. Right. So next one is uh, preparation of alcohols from that is uh, from aldehydes. From aldehydes. So how the alcohols are prepared from aldehydes? So here by reduction, by reduction of aldehydes. So reduction of aldehydes can be done by that is uh, two methods. First, the uh, so in the first method we are treating aldehyde with uh, hydrogen in the presence of platinum. Okay, that means we are doing reduction by taking hydrogen in the presence of plat metal catalyst platinum, or we can, in the place of platinum we can take palladium as well as lithium. So thereby what happens means this aldehyde will be converted to the primary alcohol. Okay. So one, there is another method, okay. So there is another method. So this is uh, first method that is uh, preparation of aldehyde, uh, sorry, preparation of alcohols from aldehyde. And uh, second method is by treating that is uh, aldehyde with uh, that is uh, hydriding agents like uh, sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride or sodium in the presence of methanol, okay. So treating aldehyde uh, with uh, hydride reducing agents. Okay, reducing agents like hydride, so lithium aluminum hydride or sodium borohydride. Okay, so when aldehyde is treated with the that is uh, reducing agents like lithium aluminum hydride or sodium borohydride. 
Okay, so you are going to get the secondary alcohol. So when upon treatment of that, uh, that is uh, ald aldehydes uh, with uh, sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride uh, in the presence of uh, sodium in the presence of ethanol, you are going to get secondary alcohol. Fine. Next. Uh, so that means the primary and secondary alcohol we are going to get. So you can take this also. That is, uh, when you are taking aldehyde, the compound, what you are going to get? Primary alcohol. Suppose if you are taking ketone. So ketone also can be converted to alcohols. Okay, secondary alcohol, it can be converted as a tertiary alcohol. Suppose if the ketone is treated with the, that is, uh, reducing agents like uh, sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride, we are going to get secondary alcohol. Suppose if the ketone is treated with the Grignard reagent, so this is Grignard reagent, RMGX, and followed by hydrolysis, you are going to get the tertiary alcohol. So this is the preparation. This is the preparation of that is uh, alcohols. Okay. So alcohols can be prepared by how many methods? So it can be prepared from alkyl halides. Okay. It can be prepared from that is uh, alkenes. Okay. And it can be prepared from aldehydes and it can be prepared from the ketones also. So from four compounds, from four functional groups, we can prepare. So alcohols can be prepared from alkyl halides by treating with aqueous KOH. It can be prepared from alkenes by, uh, that is uh, two methods. One is Markovnikov addition. Uh, consider H2SO4 in the presence of H2O, it will follow Markovnikov addition. Second one, it will follow diborane uh, in, the, in the presence of retrohydrofuran, retrohydrofuran and uh, that is uh, hydrogen peroxide, you are going to get uh, alcohol. And by taking aldehydes, that aldehydes are treated with the, that is uh, hydrogen in the presence of catalyst, or it can be treated with the hydrate agents like uh, sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride, you are going to get primary alcohol. Suppose if you are taking ketones, from ketones, how you will prepare alcohols means? So, so ketone that is, is treated with the hydrate uh, reducing agents like sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride or sodium in the presence of ethanol, you are going to get secondary alcohol. Suppose if you are making use of Grignard reagents means, uh, Followed by hydrolysis, we are going to get tertiary alcohol. Next, physical properties of alcohol. So here you can see the this is the physical properties. So here the boiling point is directly proportional to number of carbon atoms. Yes, boiling point how it is related directly proportional to number of carbon atoms. That means uh, uh, more the chain length, more will be the boiling point. More the surface area, more will be the boiling. So here branching. So branching, what happens here? Boiling point is inversely proportional to branching. Boiling point is inversely proportional. So branching is more means surface area will be less. When surface area is less means less boiling point. So more the branching, less surface area. Okay. So more branching is present, less surface area. More branching, okay, it leads to less surface area. Okay. Less surface area means so less boiling point. It is. And solubility is also depend upon the size. It is inversely proportional to size. Uh, so if the alcohol is uh, larger size, means solubility is less. If the alcohol is smaller size, means solubility is more. And solubility is directly proportional to branching. More the branching, more the solubility. This is the relation. Okay, so this is the solubility is directly proportional to branching. And uh, boiling point is inversely proportional to uh, branching. Mm -hmm. Understood. So this is the physical properties. Next, let us go further. That is the uh, chemical properties. Okay, so what are the chemical properties? Let us discuss the chemical properties. So here, if you take the chemical properties, so cleavage of that is, uh, uh, so this alcohol will participate in the chemical reactions, that is uh, by, that is uh, three types. Alcohol will undergo chemical reactions, uh, three types of chemical reactions. The first type is uh, by cleavaging, that means by breaking of the OH bond, okay? Alcohol will participate in chemical reactions by that is breaking the oxygen as well as hydrogen bond. This is first type, right? And uh, second type, okay. Uh, so here, in this case, uh, the ease of reaction depends upon the stability of the alkoxide ion. Ease of reaction depends upon the stability of alkoxide ion. So this is the first case. And uh, second case, if you take the, that is uh, second case, so here acidity, so phenols, you know that is phenols is more acidic compared to water. Water is more acidic compared to primary alcohol. And the primary alcohol is more compared to secondary alcohol. Secondary alcohol is more acidic compared to tertiary alcohol. That means in this sequence, which is having more acidity, phenols are more acidic in nature. Phenols are more acidic in nature. 
Next, which is uh, least acidic, uh, that is tertiary alcohol is uh, least acidic. Least acidic, right. Next, the so second type of reactions. What is second type of reactions means here, uh, the alcohols will participate, uh, that is by cleavage of COH bond. Okay, so alcohols will participate in chemical reactions by cleavage, that means by breaking the carbon and oxygen bond. First type of reaction is, uh, that is by breaking the, that is, uh, uh, oxygen hydrogen bond and second type is uh, by breaking that is uh, carbon and oxygen bond and here the ease of reaction depends upon the stability of carbocations ease of uh, that is uh, reaction depends upon the stability of carbocations and order of reactivity so order of reactivity so in this type of reactions which type of alcohol will participate more tertiary alcohol will participate more okay because uh, if you are breaking tertiary alcohol what you are going to get you are going to get the that is uh, tertiary carbocation you are going to get the tertiary carbocation tertiary carbocation is more stable compared to that is uh, primary secondary okay so here in this case the order is uh, this one and reactions involving whole alcohol molecule so like this that means reactions involving the whole alcohol this is the third type of reaction so in this type of reactions the whole alcohol molecule is involving so here in this case alcohol upon treatment with concentrated HTSO4 see the temperatures at 443 kelvin you are going to get uh, alkene and at 413 kelvin you are going to get ether and at 383 kelvin you are going to get uh, a salt okay when alcohol is treated with concentrated sulfuric acid at three different temperatures you are going to get uh, three different products at 443 kelvin you are going to get alkene at 413 Kelvin, you are going to get ether. At 383 Kelvin, you are going to get salt. Next, alcohol upon treatment with alumina. Alcohol upon treatment with alumina, Al2O3, at two different temperatures. That is at 513 Kelvin and 633 Kelvin. You see this one. At 533 and 613 Kelvin, you are going to get two compounds. That is, you are going to get ether and you are going to get, that is, alkene. You are going to get ether and you are going to get the so uh, uh, next uh, next type of reactions under reactions involving uh, al whole alcohol molecule oxidation we have oxidation of alcohol so when uh, when you are oxidizing alcohol al alcohol will be converted to aldehyde or keto if it is primary alcohol means you are going to get aldehyde if it is secondary alcohol means you are going to get keto these on further oxidation what you are going to get you are going to get the carboxylic acid next uh, dehydrogenation okay so next type of reactions uh, that in reactions involving alcohol molecule is dehydrogenation. So dehydrogenation, what happens? This primary alcohol upon heating with uh, that is uh, copper in the presence of 273 Kelvin. So dehydrogenation of alcohols can be done by passing alcohol vapors over heated copper cations. And what you are going to get? You are going to get the aldehyde. Okay. Secondary alcohol. This secondary alcohol vapors on on passing over copper in the presence of 273 Kelvin, you are going to get the the dehydration, tertiary alcohol vapors upon passing on that is uh, uh, copper catalyst at 273 Kelvin. What you are going to get? You are going to get a compound called alkene. This is very important. So, tertiary alcohol on dehydration, you are going to get alkene. Whereas, primary and secondary alcohol on dehydro dehydrogenation, you are going to get that is carbonyl compound. So, this is important. Okay, so this is the that is uh, chemical properties. So how many types of uh, reactions alcohols will undergo? Three types. So, that is first type of reactions is that is by breaking the oxygen and hydrogen bond. Second type of reaction is by breaking the carbon and oxygen bond. And third type of reaction is that is uh, whole alcohol molecule is participating. And a third type of reaction we have dehydration, oxidation, dehydrogenation and dehydration. Dehydration with the concentration of so three different temperatures, three different products. Oxidation, Primary means aldehyde, secondary means keto, and further oxidation, carboxylic acid, and this one. And the dehydrogenation, primary and secondary gives aldehyde ketone. Tertiary uh, won't undergo, so tertiary alcohol won't undergo dehydrogenation. Okay, it won't undergo dehydrogenation, but uh, it will uh, undergo dehydration. Okay, it will undergo dehydration upon uh, passing over copper to synthetic alkene. So, this is very important reaction. Tertiary alcohol won't undergo dehydrogenation okay instead of dehydrogenation when you are passing the tertiary alcohol vapors over copper in the presence of two centimeter you are going to get a compound called alkene next let us go for the distinction test okay so distinction test of the that is alcohols okay so um, 
alcohol upon reaction with disulfuric acid what is the product one student has asked the question alcohol upon reaction with uh, dilute sulfuric acid dilute sulfuric acid uh, we are going to get uh, it is um, uh, Usually, this alcohols uh, uh, upon reaction with uh, constant H two SO four, we are going to get three products. So, dilute sulfuric acid, uh, we doesn't have this reaction actually the syllabus. Uh, so, usually, we'll be having constant H two SO four. Reactions of alcohol will uh, take place uh, with the constant H two SO four. Next, let us discuss about the distinction test. So, what are the distinction test we have? That is. Uh, so here there are three types of tests they have given that is uh, dichromate test that is uh, uh, victor mayer test and lucas test so here if you take the dichromate test okay the so primary alcohol primary alcohol that is acid with same number of carbon atoms secondary alcohol ketone primary alcohol will give that is uh, carboxylic acid because potassium dichromate is a strong oxidizing agent H2Cr2O7 is the strong oxidizing agent. Strong oxidizing agent. So directly, this uh, alcohol will be converted to the acid. Alcohol will be converted to the acid. Secondary alcohol, what you are going to get? You are going to get the ketone. Tertiary alcohol, there is no reaction. And in Victor's Mayer's test, so what is happening means this uh, primary alcohol will give that is uh, blood red color. In Victor Mayer test, this primary alcohol. Will give primary alcohol will give which, which color that is uh, blood red color it is going to be blood red color primary alcohol okay and if you take the that is uh, secondary alcohol if you take the secondary alcohol secondary alcohol will give which color that is uh, blue color Secondary alcohol will give that is uh, blue color. And tertiary alcohol is colorless. In Victor Mayer test, that is uh, primary alcohol will give which color? Blood red color. Secondary alcohol will give the that is uh, blue color. Okay. And secondary alcohol will give blue color and primary alcohol will give red red. And in Lucas test, uh, primary alcohol no turbidity. Secondary alcohol turbidity in five minutes and tertiary alcohol turbidity after half minutes. So this is the that is alcohols. Next, let us go for the that is phenols. Okay, so phenols, so, so here, in phenols also, first let us discuss about preparation of phenols, preparation followed by that is, uh, uh, We'll discuss about the preparation of phenols. So here, first we are taking that is benzene sulfonic acid, C6H5SO3H. What we are calling it as that is uh, benzene sulfonic acid. This is so benzene sulfonic acid upon treatment with the sodium hydroxide. Upon treatment with the sodium hydroxide. So acid. This is an acid. Acid plus base. What you are going to get? You are going to get the salt. Acid plus base. You are going to get the salt. Next year, this salt upon hydrolysis with NaOH, we are going to get sodium phenoxide. We are going to get the sodium phenoxide. Okay, it is a salt. Sodium phenoxide is a salt. This upon treatment with dilute HCl, what you are going to get? You are going to get the phenol. And the phenol can be prepared by benzene diazonium chloride also. Benzene diazonium chloride upon treatment with H2O, you are going to get the phenol. Right. Next, uh, this uh, phenol can be prepared by taking that is. Um, of, uh, that is aryl chloride, that is uh, C6H5Cl. Okay, so when you are taking an aryl chloride upon treatment with uh, that is uh, uh, in the presence of NaOH at temperature 623 Kelvin and uh, 320 atmosphere. Okay, so chlorobenzene. Okay, so when you are taking the chlorobenzene, 
when you are taking the chloroprenes in the presence of NaOH, okay, at, at 623 Kelvin and 320 atmospheres, so what you are going to get? That is so sodium phenoxide. You are going to get the sodium phenoxide. This sodium phenoxide upon treatment with the dilute HCl, same here. Here also we got sodium phenoxide, here also we got sodium phenoxide. So we are going to get phenol, okay? And uh, cumin, cumin process, you know. So cumin process, uh, already you are aware about this cumin process. So isopropyl benzene, we are calling this as cumin. Isopropyl benzene, we are calling it as cumin. So here, this upon, that is uh, oxid, that is uh, upon treatment with oxygen, what you are going to get? Cumin hydroperoxide. You are going to get the cumin hydrogen peroxide. You are going to get. This is our cumin hydrogen peroxide. This is on hydrolysis. What happens here? Cleavage will take place here and you are going to get the phenol. You are going to get the product called phenol. Okay, so this is the uh, that is uh, reaction between the that is cumin. So here, uh, if you see this, uh, there are four methods are there for preparation of phenol. That is, uh, first is one from benzene sulfonic chloride, and second one is uh, that is from benzene diazonium chloride, and third one is from uh, chlorobenzene, and fourth one is cumin. If you take the first process and uh, third process, you take the first as well as third process. So this these two are two step process. These two are the two step process. But whereas second and fourth process, uh, the fourth also it is a two step process and second one process is only one step. Simply we can prepare by taking uh, benzene diazonium chloride on hydrolysis, you are going to get the phenol. Okay. So this is about the, that is a uh, preparation. Next, uh, uh, let us go further, that is uh, chemical properties. The chemical properties of phenol, that is, it will show the same properties of benzene. That is phenol will undergo halogenation. Okay. That is upon treatment with, uh, that is uh, bromine. Okay, you are going to get the in the presence of carbon disulfide, you are going to get uh, orthobromophenol as well as parabromophenol. Phenol under, can undergo sulfonation also, phenol can undergo nitration also, phenol can undergo fetal calf alkylation. Okay, and at ortho and para positions, okay, due to activating a hose. So, this is about the that is uh, phenols. So next, uh, if you are going for the that is uh, test to distinguish phenols from alcohols. So, how the phenols are distinguished from alcohols. That means these are the tests shown by phenols only, but not alcohols. So when phenol is treated with FeCl3 solution, which color you are going to get? Violet color. You are going to get the violet color. When phenol will react with bromine in the presence of water, you are going to get a product called that is tribromophenol. You are going to get the, that is tribromophenol. This tri formation of tribromophenol will be appeared in the form of white PPT. Okay, when phenol is reacting with the Lieberman nitrosol test, first it will give which color? Blue color. Next, followed by red on dilution. Very important. First, it will give blue color, followed by red on dilution. And uh, when phenol is treated with the ammonia in the presence of sodium hypochlorite test, when phenol is treated with the ammonia in the presence of sodium hypochlorite test, it gives which color? Blue color. Okay, it gives the blue color. Azodite test, phenol will give the orange color. Which color? It will give the orange color. So total, there are four distinguishing tests uh, that is uh, by which we can distinguish phenols from alcohols. One is uh, that is uh, FeCl3 test, neutral FeCl3. Phenol will form complex with the neutral FeCl3 compound, and it will form that is a bromine water test. Uh, bromine water test uh, it gives white PPT. Okay, phenol will give white PPT upon treatment with bromine water, and uh, Lieberman nitrosol test first it will give blue color upon dilution it gives the red color. And the sodium hypochlorite test, it gives blue color, as well as it gives orange. So there are five tests are there. These five tests are very important. Okay. So they will ask in the examination among the among which of the following tests will distinguish phenols from alcohols means we have to remember five tests. One is FeCl3, second one is bromine water test, third one is Lieberman nitrosol test, fourth one that is sodium hypochlorite test, and fifth one is azodite test. Okay. Let us go for the ethers. So this is the ethers. So ethers, uh, so classification, first let us see the classification. 
So either are of that is uh, that is uh, simple or this is first type of classification. There are two types of ethers that is symmetrical or simple ethers. Second one is uh, mixed or unsymmetrical ethers, and third one is aliphatic ethers, and fourth one is aromatic ethers. Okay. Symmetrical ethers means uh, you can you can see the that is uh, here this R O R type. This we are called as symmetrical. Unsymmetrical means R O R dash. Here R and R dash are different. Aliphatic ethers, R and R dash, both are alkyl groups. Aromatic ethers, either one or both, R and R dash, that is all alkyl groups. Next, uh, you see the ethers, that is here, you can see the carbon is having this hybridization and it is having the bond length also. Next, physical properties, uh, physical properties of ether, that is dipolar. Ethers are, that is, uh, the dipolar due to slightly. So, the CO bond on ethers is very, that is, uh, Okay, if you take this, okay, and boiling points are lower than isomeric alcohols. It has boiling points are less than alcohols. It's very important. It is lower than isomeric alcohols due to lack of hydrogen bonding. Alcohols is able to show hydrogen bonding. Ethers are not. And solubility in water, uh, so here uh, that is ethers. Okay. So the solubility is inversely proportional to molecular mass. Less the molecular mass, more soluble. Okay. More soluble means less. This. Next, uh, uh, this uh, soluble, it is fairly soluble in organic solvents. Ethers are fairly soluble in organic solvents and it is lighter than. And the chemical reactions. Uh, so when ether is reacting with concentrated CL, you are going to get a salt. You are going to get a salt. Next, the cleavage of CO bond. When ether is treated with uh, hydrogen halide at 373 Kelvin, what happens is this bond will be cleaved. Carbon oxygen bond will be cleaved, and you are going to get alcohol and alkyl halide. So, you are going to get uh, alcohol and that is alkyl halide. Next, uh, when ether is treated with H2O, the presence of dilute H2SO4, you are going to get uh, alcohol. As I said na, in the alcohol reactions, uh, Alcohols upon treatment with constant HCSO4. So it will give three different types of products for three different reactions. So alcohol will may give alkene, alcohol will give that is ether also, alcohol will give alkyl hydrogen sulfate salt also. So it depends upon the temperature. Okay. So we can prepare ether from alcohol that is by upon treatment with HCSO4. The temperature is very important. When ether is treated with ECL5, what you are going to get? Alkyl chloride. Reactions involving alkyl groups, so substitution products and is going to be. And if you're taking the aromatic ether, so this aromatic ether will participate in electrophilic substitution reactions. Uh, RL alkyl ethers give ortho and para substituted. Okay. So this is the uh, this chemical properties. Uh, and preparation of ether, this is preparation. So alcohol upon treatment, concentrate HCSO4, you're going to get ether. And uh, so when alcohol vapors are passed on concentrated HCSO4, already this reaction we discussed in alcohols uh, preparation, uh, preparation of chemical properties of alcohols. In chemical properties of alcohols, we discussed this reaction when alcohol vapors is passed to concentrated HCSO4 at 413 Kelvin. Okay, we are going to get uh, ether. Or when alcohol is passed, uh, vapors are passed over the heated alumina catalyst. When alcohol vapors are passed over heated alumina catalyst at 523 Kelvin, you are going to get. One more, the fav that is a uh, well known reaction that is Williamson ether synthesis. In Williamson ether synthesis, also, we can prepare ether by taking alkyl halide upon treatment with sodium alkoxide. We are going to get the ether. Okay. And Williamson ether synthesis is very important. This is it will, it will involve SN2 mechanism in case of primary alkyl halides. In the case of secondary and tertiary alkyl halide elimination. Okay. Next, to dehydration of alcohols for the formation of ethers follows primary, secondary, and tertiary. So this is the, that is uh, classification, physical properties, preparation, chemical properties. Preparation, only two preparation methods are there. Uh, one is alcohol by alcohol, passing over the, uh, that is the constant HCSO4 at 413 Kelvin. Second one is medium sun ether synthesis. Okay. So here, uh, reaction of ethereal oxygen, chemical properties here, that is reaction of ethereal oxygen. That means this is, we are calling it as ethereal oxygen. So it is uh, having a lone pair of electrons, so it can easily take the hydrogen, okay, H plus, and it is able to form a bond with the hydrogen. And oxygen is having positive charge, uh, and uh, 
This positive charge is in association with the Cl minus. The cleavage of CO bond, uh, so when ether is uh, treated with the uh, hydrogen halide, like uh, HI. HI, you are going to get the alcohol as well as alcohol. So when you are passing over HTSO4, you are going to get the alcohol. Okay, so all this here. Okay, so this is our synopsis. Uh, next. Uh,